Construct a binomial distribution when the probability of success is P equals 0 0.3 for four trials. Basically what this is, is we need to go ahead and understand what a binomial experiment is and then apply the binomial probability formula to construct the binomial distribution, which is basically a table of values. And then it can be graphed using a histogram. We're going to need to start with understanding what a binomial experiment is. A binomial experiment is a probability experiment that satisfies the following conditions. Number one, the experiment has a fixed number of trials where each trial is independent of the other trials. Number two, there are only two possible outcomes of interest for each trial. Each outcome can be classified as a success or as a failure. Number three, the probability of success is the same for each trial. And number four, the random variable X counts the number of successful trials. Well, there are some symbols that we need to use in here along with the binomial probability formula. First, let's start with representing the information. So we're going to start with letting n be the number of trials. Then we're going to let p represent the probability of success in a single trial. Then we'll let q represent the probability of failure in a single trial and that will be the difference of 1 and P. So for example, in this problem, P will be 0.3 and Q will be 0.7 because I will subtract P from 1 to get the probability of failure. And then finally, X is going to represent the random variable as a count of the number of successes in the number of trials. So in this instance, X is going to be represented by a number starting with 0 and going all the way up to N, which will be the number of our trials. For example, 0 would mean that there are no successes in that trial. 1 would be that there, are one, there would be one success in the four trials. 2 would be two successes, three successes, four successes, and so on. So now for our problem where P is going to be equal to 0.3, and let me scroll back up to show you that, we already know what P is and we already know what N is. So we just need to go ahead and generate Q and then we need to write out a table. In addition, as I said previously, we're gonna to need to know what the binomial probability formula is so that we can plug our numbers into it and represent the probabilities for each one of counts for the successes. So, here is the binomial probability formula. It's given as P of X, and that will be equal to N items chosen X at a time, times the probability of success raised to the count of the number of successes, times the probability of failure raised to the number of trials minus the count of successful trials. Now, for the problem that we have where, as I said previously, P is equal to 0.3 and N will be equal to 4, this is what we'll generate. So, N is equal to 4, P is equal to 0.3, Q will be equal to 1 minus 0.3 or 0.7, and then X is going to be represented as 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And those are the probabilities that we'll be finding. We'll be looking for the probability of 0, the probability of 1, so on, all the way up to the probability of 4. And our distribution table will look like this. We'll start with two columns, one for X and then one for the probability of X. And since X will be represented as 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, that means that we need to find the probability 
of zero, the probability of one, the probability of two, the probability of three, and the probability of four. So we'll start with the probability of zero. And we're going to use this formula as I stated. So n is four, so we'll start with four right here. We're using a combination and we're going to use x. x is going to represent or be represented by each one of these numbers and we're going to end up doing five of these calculations. So x is zero in the first instance and then we'll multiply that by p which in this case is going to be 0 0.3 and we're going to raise that to the x power which is zero we'll multiply that by q which is 0 0.7 and we will raise that to the n minus x power which would be 4 minus 0 so once we simplify this this is what the following looks like and you can use a calculator to calculate these you're going to want to use a scientific calculator that allows you to do combinations if you're using an online calculator I recommend web 2.0 calc because it's a pretty straightforward online calculator and let me show you what that looks like so this is web 2.0 calc and we're able to do combinations and we'll be able to do exponents so what we're going to start with is the combination key and on a cal scientific calculator you may have to put the n in first and then press the ncr key and then press your x value in this case we're going to do four comma zero which is going to represent the combination formula and you can see that it will indicate what it is right here above the input screen we'll close the parentheses and we're going to multiply which you can either left click the multiplication key or use the asterisk key on your keyboard which would be shift 8 then we're going to type in 0 0.3 we're going to raise that to the 0 power and then we're going to multiply by 0 0.7 and we're going to raise that to the fourth power and you'll notice that everything that I've typed in in the input field is represented above in the display. And if I left click zero, it's going to give me an answer. And generally speaking, we would like to go four decimal places on this. In this particular case, it gives me 0 0.2401, and that's what we're going to use. So the probability of zero is 0 0.2401. And of course, I will put that back in to my table. And we're going to calculate for P of 1, P of 2, P of 3, and P of 4. So this will, P of 1 will look like this. And you'll notice that the two exponents will have to add up to what n is, which in this case is 4. P of 2 will be represented by this formula. P of 3. And then finally, P of 4. I apologize, this should be a 3, and I'm not sure why I wrote a 2, but we'll fix that very quickly. And then we'll continue this. And then obviously we need to calculate those remaining probabilities using the scientific calculator. And so I've calculated the probabilities for x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3, and x equals 4, and I will go ahead and transfer those into our distribution.
And then to confirm that we've done everything correctly, we need to remember that the sum of the probabilities will be equal to 1 if I've done this correctly or very close to 1. So then go ahead and add these five values together. And in fact, the sum of those five values is 1. Now what we're going to do is take that table and convert it into a histogram. So I've gone ahead and converted the table from a vertical table to a horizontal table because it'll be easier to review all these numbers as I'm creating the histogram. So when we go to create the histogram, remember that it's just simply a first quadrant graph. And and this is simply going to be labeled as P of X because we haven't defined X to be anything at this point. And then in addition, down here, we're going to label this as the X axis, which normally if you're creating a histogram, you want to label these according to what the problem is. And then this is going to be our probability axis. And since I have a total of five numbers here, I'll draw those across or label those across the bottom. And I know that my highest probability in this case is going to be 0.41. So we'll go ahead and make the table, the, the histogram go up to 0.45. And then the lowest probability is 0.0081. So we'll start very low and we'll start at 0.05. This will be 0.10. Now for zero, P of X is 0.24 roughly. So we'll just bring that up to about right there. And then we'll go ahead and draw our vertical bar. And then for P of X, or I should say P of one, it's 0.411. So we'll come up to just above 0.4. So somewhere right about there. And then we'll just go ahead and draw our vertical bar. Also, remember that in a histogram, consecutive vertical bars need to touch. So P of 2 is going to be 0.2646, so somewhere right about here. Draw that out. P of 3 is 0.0756, so somewhere between 0.05 and 0.10. We'll just go ahead and draw our vertical bar and then for number four p of four i should say 0.0081 which is going to be some really small bar and that's what our distribution looks like as a histogram now you can use technology to do this also and it'll go much quicker uh, for example pearson has something called stat crunch and if you left click stat, once you bring it up, you can highlight calculators and then left click binomial. You'll notice that it's already got a histogram and it's not a full on histogram, but it is a bar graph and it will represent what we're looking for. And if we want to go ahead and use the numbers that I was using in this example, remember that N would be equal to four, the probability is of success or I should say success is 0 0.3 and then we want to go ahead and go from X is less than or equal to 4 and we'll hit compute and this gives us a general shape and you'll notice that it's very similar to the histogram that I created let me slide that over so you can see In addition, you can use something such as Excel. You can go ahead and open up Excel. You'll need to go to the formulas tab, go to more functions and then statistical. And then you're going to look for binomial distribution, which will be this left click that. And then you're going to need to enter 
some information. So for the first uh, entry here, this will be the number of successes. So we'll go ahead and put in zeros because we're going to fill out our table. The number of trials would be four. The probability is 0.3. And then cumulative means that I can go ahead and determine the format of the function. If I type in true, then it's going to return what we call a cumulative distribution function, which is the probability that there are at most. So for example, if I had number as three, then it would give me the sum of the distributions for zero, one, two, and three. We don't want to do that. So we're going to type in the word false so that it gives me the number at, and then we'll hit okay and we'll see that this number that shows up in cell a1 is exactly the same as what we receive for p of zero as we did it manually you'll have to do that for each one of those it's not the same as using stat crunch